All right, we continue with the cricket on the Sportsmag Zone. West Indies under 19s took a major step towards qualifying for the semi finals of the ICC under 19 World Cup with a three wicket win over Sri Lanka in their first Super Sixes Group 2 match in Kimberley earlier on Tuesday. Electing to bat, Sri Lanka battled to 231 all out, led by Denura Kalupahana, who made 53. Barbadian medium pacer Renika Smith was the pick of the Windies bowlers with 4 for 47 from his 10 overs. Nathan Edwards supported with 2 for 47. In reply, the Windies under 19 scored 232 for 7, reaching their target with three deliveries to spare. Steve Wedderburn led the chase with a well-timed 61 from 71 deliveries. He first shared in a 48-run opening partnership with captain Stefan Pascal, who contributed 33, and then an 86-run third-wicket partnership with Jordan Johnson, who made 39. West Indies will next face Australia on Friday. This is how the Group 2 table is looking after today's matchup. Australia leading on four points, but they have two games they haven't played a game in the super sixes yet just the four points carried over from the first round the wind is on the 19s three matches um, two points carried over from the first round plus today's two points sri lanka now on two points they will be hard pressed to make it to the semi-finals with just one game for them to play south africa england and zimbabwe all have their two Super Sixes matches still to contest. You see six teams there, but when you qualify for the first round and you go into the Super Sixes, you only play the two teams who finished in a different position from you did in the first round. So for example, the West Indies who finished third in their first round group would play the first and second place teams from the other group, which means that they are playing Sri Lanka and Australia. I really do hope you understood that. Nikola Tamchandani is in South Africa and he joins us via Zoom to discuss this West Indies win. Welcome, Nikhil. How are you doing? Good times for West Indies cricket. We're having all this fun. I hope you're well. I know you're well. Yeah, well, Ricardo. And I mean, you have another job in teaching because that explanation was so thorough. I think everyone at home definitely understood. Well, if you understand, then I know I did well. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I have been critical of the way the Windies under-19s have gone about um, a few of the chases at this World Cup. I thought today, though, they were excellent in how they approached that 232 on a difficult pitch that was taking spin, um, offering bounce and turn, um, for the spinners and the Sri Lankans had a lot of quality in that department as well. Your assessment of the overall West Indies performance and specifically how well they chased today. Yeah, I think the word for me, Ricardo, is gutsy. And when I look at the four chases from the West Indies, I still am not confident that they've had their best batting display as yet. However, as you mentioned, a surface like that, variable bounce, you saw the delivery that Joe Andrew got. He had no chance of playing it. It hit his ankle um, from basically a shorter length. And that, to me, just told you how difficult the surface was uh, to play on. But I think the way that they have gone about these chases, in the power play especially, um, I think they have really understood the value of trying to maximize that hard and new ball. They've gone at six and a half runs and over in the first 10. And that's actually an area where the West Indies have struggled senior level uh, in that first and over is starting a bit too slowly. So it's great to see that our younger players are starting with so much positive intent. They've been fear, fearless, I should say. And I think Stefan Pascal, the captain, the way he's began things at the top of the order, deserves a lot of credit for that. Yeah, very much the case. Today was a more measured approach, though, because if you look at the other matches, a lot of wickets in those 10 overs, although they have played with a certain level of freedom and fearlessness um, but today a lot more measured and it showed in the number of wickets that were lost in those first 20 overs um, where we weren't four or five down but just two down and with a good platform from which to build 
Yeah, I think your countryman, I know you'll be happy about this, Steve Wedderburn. Um, the way he went about things, it was really a uh, mature innings. And that's, to me, I think one of the big standouts for some of these guys. I look at guys like him, Nathan Seeley as well. Not only the fact that they're getting runs, but the way that they're going about the run scoring. For me, it just really looked very selective from his part. He understood that when Pascal was at the other end, he would play his shots and he had to sort of dig in. And he really picked his moments well. He's very strong against spin. Um, so he saw those slow sweeps, he saw those cuts, but he really just kept things together. I think that's been one of their strong suits, actually. In every game that they've won the West Indies, someone has been able to take the game deep. You saw Joel Andrew, he got 50 in the game they won against Scotland. Pascal got half century. And then today, Wedderburn, uh, who came into the tournament, well, came back into the team today. So that was really great to see. And that right there is one of his slog suits against the spin. He was just a mature innings, really mature. Yeah, you are right. I definitely agree with you when you say he picked his moments today. And it's credit to the depth in this West Indies team that Wedderburn, who had played the first match in the middle order, came back to open the batting today and made the difference. Yeah, I think it just is a testament to the versatility that they have. The fact that the lower order as well, I want to spend some time talking about them because you've seen contributions from Nathan Edward with bat in hand, Nathan Seeley for me. Um, what he's done for that team all around, he's bowling his left arm spin, he's going at less than four runs and over. He's also picking up seven wickets and he's averaging over 30 with bat in hand. I think it gives the West Indies options and I think they can beat teams based on different surfaces because of that versatility, that flexibility in their side. So, I think it's exciting times ahead. And if they beat Australia, they're in an excellent position to qualify uh, for that semi-final. And I look at this team, it's very reminiscent of that 2020 team. Remember that West Indies and 19 team with um, Jaden Seals, Matthew Ford, Naeem Young? They got to the quarterfinals and lost. I think this team could go very deep in this competition because of that fight, fortitude and character that they've displayed. Right, and you know, we have really celebrated the batting, but I want to spend some time now talking about the bowlers who were able to get the job done between Renico Smith and Nathan Edward picking up the wickets. What did you make of the quality shown by the bowlers? Yeah, Maria, me and Mercado just spoke about uh, the power play, and that to me was a big struggle for the West Indies in bowling-wise coming into this game. I think they had two wickets and 30 overs of, uh, in those three matches in the power play. Today, they had Sri Lanka 46 for three. And Renico Smith, I've actually had the opportunity to see him in Barbados playing for Pickwick, playing at a local level. But I think with that height and the Yorker that he delivered a couple of times today, he could be really dangerous because he can hit that hard leg. But that Yorker uh, at pace could be a serious threat going forward. And then Nathan Edward with his left arm seam always gets the ball to swing. And you've got Thorne, who they say is the quickest in the region at that level. So... I think bowling-wise, when you pair those three seamers together with the couple of spin, finger spin that they have, um, I think it's really exciting times for a West Indies under-19 perspective and a bowling perspective as well. Yeah, you know what, And one of the things I like about this young team is the diversity of the team. And, you know, the fact that the captain is from Dominica, um, Nathan Edward is from St. Martin, the Antiguan Joel is clearly one of the best batsmen in, 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 the, in the tournament. And it speaks to a sort of a spreading out of the talent from the region being unveiled. Um, and as I mentioned on the show a couple of, of weeks ago, um, from the Eastern Caribbean and, and showing that there is quality coming out of, out of these countries as well. Yeah, I think, as you said just now, um, Lance, I think a lot of the years you think back to those that have come out of the uh, 19 World Cup, Naeem Young, Ford, Jaden Seals, it's been from Trinidad, Barbados, at times Guyana. But I am extremely impressed with Stefan Pascal. Joel Andrew I've seen for a couple of years, so I always knew, and he played, obviously, Liste cricket for the Leeward Islands at the Super 50, so I always knew he would be able to sort of carry over to that level. Jordan Johnson is another one who just played for the A team. But guys like Pascal, Nathan Edward, who I think, like all three facets of the game, Really X factor. Left arm seam swings the ball, but his batting, I think, is underrated, and he's an excellent fielder as well. So I think you're spot on there, and it's great for West Indies cricket because I even know some of the guys who didn't make the cut. Um, there's someone by the name of Zisham Motar, who's a leg spinner from Barbados, and he's quite renowned for his talent, was just picked in the CCC first class side for four day cricket. So I think there's great competition for places, but as you mentioned, the fact that it's not only coming from a certain amount of regions shows that that depth that we've missed, I think, in the last couple of years at the youth level is being strengthened.
Yeah, and to accentuate the point, this is the fourth consecutive cycle of under-19 World Cup that a, a, a player from the Windward Islands is captain. We had um, Emmanuel Stewart from Grenada in 2018, then it was Kiman Emilius, then Akeem Ogis, both from St. Lucia, and now Pascal from, from Dominica. And, you know, maybe people might say that the Windward Islands, uh, Kishore Shallow is now in charge, so this is why these things may happen. Mm -hmm. But um, Emmanuel Stewart was captain in 2018 when Cameron was still the president. So I would suggest that um, it may be a little bit cynical to suggest that. Yeah, I would just want to say on Pascal, I think, um, forget where he's from, We're just watching his body language on the field, uh, when they're in the field of West Indies, I am really impressed because I think some of the decisions he's made with his field setting, at times having four guys in the circle, as opposed to, sorry, outside the circle as opposed to five, he's been really aggressive. And then when he goes to bat and starts the innings off, he also carries it over with his personal game. And I don't think that's an easy thing to do. It's one thing to preach, but it's another thing to actually back it up with the actions. And that 50 he got a couple of games ago was extremely important in a West Indies winning cause. So if he, with the tempo that he bats, the aggressive nature that he plays his cricket, if he gets off to another good start against Australia, can get 50, 60, 70, or of course maybe 100, I think the West Indies are in a great position because he will be aggressive in the field. Yeah, and one quick one, Nikhil, because you speak about fielding, have you seen a better fielding West Indies side? I have been so impressed with this unit in the field, not just the catching, but the ground feeling, fielding all round, they are fantastic out in the middle. Yeah, well, when I think, Ricardo, back to in your glory days when we won World Cups, our fielding, we were the best in the world. So I think it's a step in that direction. I'll also say I love the shouting as well. They're always very animated. It is a 50-over game. A lot of times you hear teams zoning out for the middle overs. These guys are up for it. You can hear them through the stop mics, the effect mics. And I love that. The energy is, is pretty high, and I think this team could go quite deep. Yeah, they are young and energetic. They've already gone pretty deep in this tournament. Still a lot of work to do because they have the Aussies to come on Friday, and that will be a tough one. Um, you know, Lance and I have a bet. I won't say what it is at this stage. It's too early um, to let out that bet. I can um, tell, Nikhil. I'll tell you. After the show, right? Yeah, tell me more. I'm, interested. I'm I, interested. I don't want to put Lance in that position right now. I wonder why Or is not. it me but who would hilarious. be in a position? I think that's more like it, Ricardo. Lance oh, I would be in a position? Yes. Nikhil, Lance is fencing. So, Lance is in a safe position. <laughs> okay, Ricardo fair. Lance is always okay. tends to go safe. He always tends to go well, safe. I mean, say, say that again, Nikhil. Hold on. Nikhil, say know. that again. No, because he has history. He's been doing this for too long. Yeah. It's not like it's us. Experience. That yeah. yeah. Oh, experience. Ricardo is a man that always jumps in, yeah, dump the pen, you know? Yeah. I, well, I, I, I don't know if I could trust that guy. I don't know if I could trust that guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Nikhil? On that note, we will see you next never. Have a great day. <laughs> see you <laughs> soon, you, Nikhil. Right, I'll book again. you. Bye. <laughs> right, okay, Let's go to a break. We'll be back with more of the Source Rank Zone. <laughs>